let me show you my favorite workflow when it comes to images in Python. You can see that I've got a bit of a widget over here. I'm gonna explain the details of that in just a bit, but the main thing that this widget allows me to do is it allows me to annotate the image by drawing a couple of points in this case, uh, but I'm also able to draw these squares and there's also uh, polygons if that's something you're interested in. This is an annotation widget that's pretty useful, but the main thing I wanna do now is just draw a point on the face of this space vulture over here. When I add that one point, this updates. This is the result of a computer vision model. The thing that's really interesting about this model, it's a segment anything from Meta, by the way, is that it doesn't really care about the classes that are under the hood. It is pretty much a zero shot approach. I can just give it a little bit of a hint of what I'm interested in. Maybe not just the face of this vulture, but maybe also the wings and maybe also the guy on top, right? And sure, you have to annotate this a little bit, but the really neat thing about Segment Anything is that you don't have to give it classes up front. You just have to give it a couple of points, and with that, it is able to infer the mask of what you're interested in. And in this case, I'm interested in separating the foreground from the background. And you can also see that the mask works pretty well if I look at the area that is actually selected. But the part of the workflow that really makes it work well at this point isn't just the fact that I've got this model available to me, it's also that I've got this very flexible widget that I can configure in many different ways to interface with segment anything. And what I would like to do in this video is explain how this is set up such that you can also run this yourself. And also, just as a fun fact, this setup works very well if you have a GPU, but it can also totally work pragmatically if you don't. So, just as a global overview, the way this whole setup works is I start with an image, and the moment that this image is loaded, it goes to two different paths. The first path is that it goes to segment anything. Maybe the simplest way to think about this, by the way, is that this is just a very big PyTorch model with weights that have been pre-trained. And the whole point of this model is that a Python image object goes in and a very big tensor can go out. At the same time though, this image also goes to this annotation interface. From here, you can draw all sorts of bounding boxes and also add some points. And let's represent these annotations that come out as some sort of a uh, dictionary. It's a bunch of annotations that belong to that one image. After all of this, we push both of these two into uh, a model step, I guess you could say, which is going to output our mask. Some pixels belong to the thing that we're interested in, other pixels don't, but this is the whole flow and the whole setup. But the thing that's really interesting here is that as far as heavy compute goes, that all basically happens here taking that image and turning it into this first tensor representation over here, that's the heavy bit. Once you have that, you can make updates to this annotation interface and this whole path to this mask is almost real time. If you start drawing insanely fast, then you might wanna have a GPU, but given a tensor representation that is cached, you can totally get by with a CPU by just annotating and checking the updates in the mask in pretty much real time. That is also why I like this setup so much. Segment anything accepts points as input, but you can also combine that with bounding boxes, so you are very flexible. But if you're interested in detecting specific subsets of the image, pixel by pixel, segment anything can actually help you a whole lot, if only for annotating the data. And I'm also doing this in a Marimo notebook, by the way, which comes with this one extra benefit. Just as a super simple example, I've got these three cells over here, A is equal to one, B is equal to two, and I've got this one output cell down below. The thing that's really neat about Marimo is that you can configure the cells to auto update. So if I were to change the value of A here and I run the cell, then this cell below can update reactively. Because a dependency, variable A, is updating, we can also make the children update as a result. And that's great if you've got Python variables, but this will also work if you're dealing with UI inputs. So as an example, I've updated A to be equal to the slider value, and I've just added a slider over here. And notice that if I were to update this, that again, all the cells update automatically. So with a slider, that's a cute demo, but you can imagine that if you've got this widget that allows you to annotate, that every time that you make an update to the annotation, we can automatically run our computer vision model, that then suddenly you have a very powerful and pragmatic setup right inside of your notebook. And now to show you the setup while zoomed out, you can see over here that I've got this annotation widget. I'm just going to be drawing some points. And you should be able to see that if I were to click around, maybe add a point there, do something on the wing there, maybe on the leg. We are definitely in the realm of real time enough and I'm not using a GPU. This is just using a CPU. If you're keen to give something like this a spin yourself, know that there is this image label annotation widget in the mo label library. This gives you a widget that allows you to configure a couple of paths where the files are. You're also able to specify different classes, as well as colors for those different classes. This gives you that annotation dictionary that you can go ahead and reuse elsewhere. 
But this is also a feature that is, again, in preview mode, so I'm also eager to get feedback. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below if there's any features that you're missing. Now, before wrapping up, there's one thing I do want to mention in the case that you do have access to a GPU, because there's a bit of a benchmark that is worth sharing. So for the final portion, I'm going to go to Molab, which is our notebook environment in the cloud that you can go ahead and use. And in particular, there's a segment anything notebook that I'll share the link to. All right, so I'm on Molab right now in the relevant notebook. And the main thing that I just want to show is the point where I tell the predictor to go ahead and use a specific image. The image has to go in as a NumPy array, by the way, but the main thing that's of interest is that this actually takes a while, 46 seconds to be exact. And that pre-processing is something that you could potentially cache if you're on a CPU machine, but that definitely is the slow bit. And if that's also a blocker, then that might be a reason to actually use a GPU. And because I'm an admin, I'm also able to add a GPU, which I'm gonna do just for demo purposes. So before I actually go, let's just check that number one more time. This was uh, 46 seconds, and I'm just gonna attach a T4 GPU, save and restart. And when I restart the whole thing with a proper GPU attached, then this step is a lot quicker. It now takes about three seconds. If that's still too slow, you can, of course, also add a larger GPU. One thing to keep in the back of your mind, by the way, is that if you're gonna go down this route, you do have to update your code. And it's stuff like this you gotta update. When you have a PyTorch model, you gotta tell it what device to go to. And if you have a GPU machine, then typically what you gotta do is you gotta tell it to go use the CUDA device. Otherwise, it might still fall back to the CPU, which is not gonna give you a speed up and you're gonna be using a lot of processing power that's wasted. So if you're gonna go down this direction, definitely don't forget that. So there you go. This is my favorite way to get started with computer vision tools using Python. The annotation interface really lets me just pick the stuff I'm interested in selecting, and this allows me to gather up a data set, and it also forces me to actually look at the data, which is something I really like. If you wanna try this yourself, links are in the show notes. If you wanna see more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button, and feel free to leave a comment down below if there's anything you would like to see me do next. I have some GPUs at my disposal, and there's a couple of experiments and a couple of tasks that I'm pretty keen on exploring. Let us know, thanks for listening.